Welcome to the part 3 of our beginners guide for Windows Server Active Directory. And let's take a look at what we have covered so far. So we have understood what is a directory service. We have understood the Windows NT architecture and we have also understood what Active Directory architecture is all about. So in this part 3 we are going to take up the concept of single master operations in the world of active directory so uh, let me just summarize what we have say covered as the architecture of uh, active directory so in the world of active directory there is no master slave relation like windows nt and every domain controller has a read write copy of active directory database so we uh, humans can make changes on any domain controller so these changes will be automatically replicated to all the domain controllers in the active directory domain and uh, all the domain controllers let's say are peers of each other there is no say boss or subordinate relationship everyone is peer of each other they are working as a team So every domain controller has read write copy of active directory database as an administrator we can make change on any domain controller a change can be creation deletion modification or movement of an object we can make it on any domain controller and these changes will be then automatically replicated to all the domain controllers in the domain so we can say that the all the domain controllers are peers of each other means everyone on the same level however there is a caveat over here so there are still some domain controllers who has to take up an added role and these roles are called as flexible single master operation roles So before understanding uh, the concept of flexible single master operation roles we need to understand what is single master or what single master operation is all about So let us take an example over here okay of a technical support team to understand the concept of a single master operation So this is a typical technical support team of say eight team members, and uh, Victoria is leading that particular team. Victoria is the team leader of this technical support team. Now every technical support associate has some specific tasks to do, and they are all the common tasks. Okay, so the day-to-day -day task can be assisting clients via phone. so troubleshooting technical issues perform root cause analysis support say roll out of new applications provide timely and accurate feedback manage multiple cases at one time say following up with the clients etc so so these are the say common tasks performed by every technical support associate in the team and there are some general tasks which are performed by a team leader let's say shift scheduling so who will come in the morning shift who will come in the afternoon shift who will be coming in the say night shift will be taken care by the team leader say team leader has to pull some weekly uh, reports so team leader also say has to pull some daily sla report so it's the responsibility of the team leader month some some monthly report as well so team leader also is responsible for say leave approvals mentoring team mentoring weekly one on one with the team members and performance re, uh, say performance reviews and team member is also responsible to delegate tasks wherever possible okay so let's say victoria came up with four tasks which she needs to delegate between the team let's say shift scheduling 
daily SLA report, weekly report, and monthly report. So, what she will, do, what she did is, she delegated shift scheduling to Rob, daily SLA report to Claire, weekly report to Roger, and monthly report to Sophia. So, in this example, you will see that there are only there is only one person okay responsible for a particular task or an operation for example let's say monthly report is handled by sophia no other person in the team will handle monthly report same thing goes with daily sla report only claire is responsible for say that particular operation or that particular task now victoria can transfer the operation or task to any other team member but we have to remember one thing over here only one person will be responsible for that particular operation so let's say if sophia wants to go on a leave okay so she uh, victoria can transfer the role to eddie or even so, uh, so victoria can transfer two roles to eddie but again, there will be only single person who will be responsible for that particular operation or that particular role. No two people will be responsible for shift scheduling or weekly report or monthly report or daily SLA report. Only one person responsible for that particular task or that particular operation. So, conclusion is we have a single person handling shift scheduling daily sla report weekly weekly reports and monthly report so these four tasks can be handled by a single person or it can be distributed amongst multiple people so we can say that there are single masters for that particular task or operation so the same concept is applied in the world of active directory there are five such single master operation rules known as flexible single master operation rules which are assigned to domain controllers in the active directory domain so this is end of part three. Hope you have enjoyed today's session and you have understood the concept of single master operation. In part four, we'll understand the structure or the hierarchy of our active directory. Thanks for joining. And if you think this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please subscribe and share this channel with your friends and technical community. Thank you very much and have a great day. Take care.